Uh, okay. So that time that we are starting the session about uh, Japan and Canada and the cons consortium model that work. Uh, I'm Takashi from the uh, Okinawa Open Laboratories and uh, co-worked with NEC Corporation. And Rich is a uh, CEO of uh, Center of Excellence of uh, Canada Center of Excellence of Next Generation Network. Uh, in this session, we are talking about uh, how the consortium has worked in the many companies and the government uh, supported the same direction, but uh, there are some problems that uh, we are uh, talking about the experience and uh, lessons learned from the, our ex uh, experience. So first, we, uh, I defined the problem statement. Um, in the session, we talk about consortium models. Uh, consortium is the aggregation of companies, government, and academia. And usually, they are competing in the field, for instance, or business, or research, etc. Uh, when they started the consortium, the, they agreed with the, some common target. And uh, gather in the same consortium and co working with together. But in nature, they are competing in the uh, main field, so there have been uh, uh, arising the gap between them and uh, each members in the consortium and uh, created barriers. And as a result, in some cases, the uh, consortium model cannot work well. In this session, I talk about two use cases, the one from Japan and the one from Canada, uh, talking about what we have done in the uh, problem and the lessons learned. The figure shows the models of open source community and open consortium. The models are similar, uh, but in each, each model, they are supported from the companies and uh, research institutes and the government. But in fact, there are many different points between the open source communities and the open consortium. The most important thing, I think, I, most important different point, I think, is uh, each model's target is different. Uh, each model, the companies are gathering to support the, and uh, <coughs> support the consortium. Uh, for, uh, in the open source community, for instance, at OpenStack, uh, many companies are becoming the member of OpenStack foundations and uh, paying their member fee and uh, uh, contributing their employees to uh, develop the open source uh, for OpenStack and uh, uh, support this type of OpenStack summit. In, in this, uh, this time, over seven, uh, over 7,000 people are gathering their uh, sponsor uh, company have paid them big money for this event. Uh, in the open source community, their motivation and target are contributing, of creating the ecosystem more bigger and stronger uh, around the open source, for instance, OpenStack. Uh, and in the, in the com open source community, the most uh, valuable person in is a developer. Uh, developer is the most high level, high uh, <coughs> level of uh, uh, open source community. And uh, uh, so, uh, for instance, the OpenStack Summit, active technical contributor are uh, given the free code, and the uh, design summit is uh, very cared about the Wi-Fi connectivity or uh, uh, some uh, electricity or coffee and snacks, etc. Uh, this target, this target, and the motivation are simple and straightforward, and they are developing the software, so-called upstream first. So in the contrary, the open consortium is there uh, that are not so simple and straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> in many cases, uh, they are targeting to uh, their, their companies are targeting the R and D for business. R and D is uh, many aspects, uh, including the level test, uh, component level testing, the product evaluation, the system POC or interval operability, etc. Uh, there are many types of works, type, type of works in the consortium. The, from government side, uh, their uh, motivation is uh, economic growth. So. Uh, uh, <coughs> 
from a government uh, who helped and uh, fund a establishment of a consortium and uh, uh, economic, uh, and, uh, including uh, recruiting the companies or startups or technology innovators and uh, uh, their uh, they are working together and creating the technology, emerging technology, and doing the business in the area. Uh, that uh, that uh, result uh, economic growth. So, uh, in the current uh, economic situation and the environment of IT system, uh, it's difficult to uh, pay the money for a sing by a single company and creating the uh, emerging technology to the commercial. So, uh, uh, many. Companies think about collaborating each other uh, and uh, collaborating with the academia, academia and the people uh, and creating the consortium is their motivation. So from the academia, they are thinking about how to educate the people uh, more, more and more uh, emerging technology and uh, uh, also uh, integrating with the uh, industry to create uh, their research more and more, and more uh, innovative. So from this uh, explained, the uh, open consortium is different from the open source community in the aspect of target and the motivation. Uh, in, the, in the consortium model, the attendees of the consortium has uh, each different goals uh, compared to the open source community. So the consortium model is difficult to organize, I think. So from now, the first year I reintroduced the uh, um, use case of Canada. Uh, All right. So it's uh, ironic to be talking about uh, uh, open and inviting when we have uh, locked doors for the presentation. Anyway, uh, I want to. My name is Rich Tazom, and uh, I lead a consortium in Canada um, that is called Sengen. It stands for the Center of Excellence in Next Generation Networks. Um, essentially, uh, we're funded in part by the Canadian federal government um, to do. And mainly a couple of things. Number one uh, is to help some of our small, medium enterprise SMEs, as we call them, uh, in terms of innovation. So especially in, the, in terms of uh, commercialization. Um, and then, of course, um, we're also trying to get uh, university and college students in Canada excited about these new mega trends that are happening. And um, so we have uh, a number of interns. Uh, next week is a, a summer uh, internship at Sengen, and we have over 16 students. The technologies that we focus on are mainly in the SDN, NFE, and IoT gateway space. Um, and of course, we are running uh, a multi-vendor, uh, open source, open um, environment. Uh, what's unique, I would say, about this uh, particular partnership is that we actually have a real wide area and metro network. So not just uh, you know uh, one data center, but also uh, we have service providers who are members, and that add to it. Um, we heard this morning about the people and process, and of course, uh, you know you can't forget about the platform as well, right? So uh, we are actually running a DevOps operation. Uh, so all the things that uh, all of our members and uh, students would need to learn. Um, we, our environment is uh, running uh, Mirantis uh, Fuel, as well as uh, Canonical's uh, Ubuntu Landscape, as well as uh, Joid, if you are familiar with that product. Uh, we have over $5 million worth of hardware and software that a lot of the small companies just can't afford. Uh, and most of that equipment and services are provided by our members. Uh, so some of these are... Uh, large companies who you would recognize. Others are uh, smaller Canadian companies. And then, of course, we also have um, three of the four largest service providers in Canada, which are TELUS, Rogers, and uh, Allstream. Um, this is a list of all of our partners that we have. A lot of them are on the uh, uh, software side and the hardware side uh, and test areas. Um, the companies on the bottom are companies that we actually had a significant proof of concept with. And on the, on the green, I don't know if you can see that or not, this is actually some of the funding that uh, these small companies actually were able to achieve. Now, I can't claim success on it all, but certainly it's at least one company uh, where we had 100% direct impact on whether or not they received VC funding. 
Uh, Canada, of course, geographically is a very large uh, country uh, made up of many government and uh, academia, universities and colleges um, and various uh, government labs. And basically what we're trying to do is gather um, uh, anyone that's actually interested in collaborating in an open way. So basically we're inviting uh, any of those uh, groups uh, to participate uh, with us. That we have, of course, uh, affiliations uh, with all of these organizations, um, and we're members of all of them. In terms of some of the services, so uh, we, we have, um, you know, kind of what I'll call the charity part of the business, which is what the government funding, basically the students and the small Canadian companies, right, helping them commercialize. But uh, that doesn't pay uh, all the bills, so we are not for profit. These are some of the things that we offer basically as services. So we are based in Canada, but of course uh, uh, we do business uh, globally. So things like uh, proof of concept validation, testing services. Uh, we're also uh, certified uh, ONF uh, training partners, and we're also doing the certification exams as well. Uh, and of course, uh, consulting. Uh, this is what our environment looks like. Um, so. We, uh, we have about uh, six clouds. Uh, five of them are doing proof of concept uh, projects. That's based on the canonical uh, landscape environment. Uh, we also have um, our uh, production infrastructure, which is using Mirantis fuel, uh, and of course being run uh, with OpenStack. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we have very interesting connectivity. So uh, we have multi-gigabit to the internet, and. Uh, uh, several hundred gigabit into the academia world. So, for example, if we want to do a collaboration with a university in Japan, obviously uh, we would connect uh, through the Canary infrastructure, which is the, the national backbone for Canada. Now, in terms of um, our growth plans for this year, this is the city of Ottawa. So Ottawa, is the, uh, if you're not familiar, is the, uh, the capital of Canada. Uh, it's based in Ontario, right on the border of Ontario and Quebec. Um, this is the three locations that we're going to be uh, moving into. Uh, so we're at the, the bottom left, um, and we'll be moving into the other two sites by the end of this calendar year uh, with very high-speed connectivity, so 100 gig between all three sites. Uh, we do plan on expanding across uh, the province, um, so we are looking at getting uh, uh, provincial support. Um, and so this would basically extend the cloud environment that we're running in the Ottawa region and then down into Toronto Waterloo. Um, and that would be a, one of the largest pockets of uh, this type of um, work that's being done within, within Ontario. And then, of course, uh, we would like to extend it across the country. So much like uh, what Canary is for the academia world, this network would be built for small Canadian companies to test out uh, their solutions uh, on a real live infrastructure that's SDN controlled. Okay, so we think it's a major differentiator for the Canadian uh, small uh, companies. And um, obviously uh, it would also be available for hire as well. In terms of the, uh, if you're uh, familiar with a group called the OPNFE, the Open Platform Network Function Virtualization Group, we're, uh, we're the first associate members, uh, Senjan. Um, this is a, a worldwide integration lab, um, and we are uh, putting in a Pharos lab, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Um, and uh, that would be about the 10th or the 11th lab uh, around the globe. Uh, one of our uh, partners is Contron, who makes a little nice uh, two rack unit system. And this is our first pod. So basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running um, open daylight, open stack, all the different scenarios and tests uh, that we believe are relevant uh, to our members, our partners, um, and then basically uh, test it across all the different hardware and software uh, and then spit out results basically. Um, and so if we have time left over, we're gonna make that lab available to the outside community. In terms of projects, so um, these are a couple of examples of uh, some projects that we're doing this calendar year. So the first one uh, involves a small Canadian company called Novaflow. Um, they're based in Montreal. And TELUS, who's the second largest service provider in Canada. And essentially what they're doing is uh, they're using um, open source, uh, uh, effectively white box switches, uh, which are uh, connected through with uh, Quagga, 
um, and then running a BGP session with a virtual MX from Juniper, so two of them. And so the scenario that, that this would be is, uh, for example, if you wanted to have a pairing arrangement, and let's say you want to do it at, say, lower cost, or some of the traditional routers and switches. Uh, the smart city infrastructure or smart city services, this is our poster child for the proof of concept that we're going to be doing this year. Um, so the lead company on this one is Juniper, and uh, the, the small Canadian company that's uh, uh, we're working with is called Inasibe, and so they're very active in the open daylight community. So if you know ODL, I think the Inasibe is the third largest contributor after Brocade and Cisco. Um, this em environment basically is going to be, the concept is open fiber, open hardware, open software for a smart city, okay? So think about that. So, you know, the, the fiber is owned, uh, let's say, by the city as opposed to a service provider. Uh, you're using white box switches, which can be easily, you know, uh, changed out if you want to move from gigabit to 10 gigabit and so on. Uh, and then, of course, the only scalable uh, multi-vendor open environment is, of course, OpenStack, and that will be a big part of this. So very exciting, and uh, we're going to be uh, showcasing this in Germany at the OPNFE uh, Summit in Berlin at the end of June. In terms of uh, collaboration, so this is uh, Canada and Japan. Um, so you know, clearly, uh, we've done uh, a lot of work. The groups are, are similar. There are some differences between the two. Uh, we, we're aware of other organizations in France and, and other places that have this type of thing. Uh, but specifically, what we're looking at with the Okinawa team is, is uh, doing some uh, joint proof of concepts and then maybe uh, some intern, uh, student intern, uh, you know, basically having Japanese students come to Canada and vice versa. Uh, and, you know, basically uh, um, to collaborate uh, on these, uh, uh, you know, very exciting open source projects. Okay. So thanks very much. Uh, sorry. Okay, so I introduced about uh, Okinawa Open Laboratories. And uh, the base of Okinawa Open Laboratories, uh, Okinawa Prefecture, the South Island of uh, Japan, and have slightly different culture compared to the mainland Japan. We are supported from Okinawa government, and Okinawa government have this established a provision of IT called uh, Okinawa Smart Hub. The, because of the geographical placement, Okinawa is more near to Asian countries such as Taiwan. And uh, if the sky is clear, the Okinawa and Taiwan also see the, each other. And according to the vision, the Okinawa Prefecture government have been doing several same activities in, in these years, such as constructing the dead center in Okinawa and then the connecting the overseas fiber cable or, or recruiting the application companies uh, to the Okinawa, uh, Okinawa Prefecture. Uh, one of the activities uh, is our laboratory that uh, I will introduce in the session. Uh, our relationship with Okinawa Smart Hub Vision is uh, uh, our Okinawa Open Laboratory is uh, contributing to realizing the Okinawa Smart Hub concept. 
our role is uh, attracting the leading companies and organizations or uh, educational in institutions or research institutions or, and, uh, from inside Japan and also from Asia uh, and gathering the Okinawa and collaborating with uh, each other and uh, creating the attractive te technologies and uh, com com cooperate with the uh, communities such as ONF or OpenStack or Linux Foundations or open on their right, et cetera. And that, uh, our mission is uh, R&D for more on practical applications, platform infrastructure uh, in the area of uh, SDN and uh, cloud computing and using the open source software, uh, especially for uh, we are using the open stack. And the key points are uh, we are more and more focused on open innovations and collaboration, joint work with uh, each uh, competing companies and bridging the gap between the users and the providers. The uh, figure shows uh, our activity model more and uh, uh, we are sitting in the middle of a market and OSS body that the developing communities or providers or system integrated the technology provider side. Uh, we are purposely bridging the gap between market and all pro technology providers. And so we are describing the use cases and the verified technologies uh, and the creating the POC and the reference design and promoting the result. And so we, the, these activities are based on our test bed uh, we are uh, uh, developing in these three years. Uh, we have uh, uh, over uh, four, four, 40 servers and many type of switches in our test bed. The model is more similar with OPNFB or product working group in the OpenStack foundations. The current membership mem member uh, is over 40 members are, uh, and uh, that is, uh, include and telecom carrier, user, uh, pro system provider, integrator, startup, etc. A large portion of our uh, member is from Japan, um, but uh, in, you are promoting in Asia, so a member you know, are from Taiwan, or Korea, or China, or Malaysia, etc. And also, uh, we, there are several uh, companies from Okinawa local, Okinawa local companies, uh, Okinawa local university or nation, etc. Uh, that uh, we are uh, community is more diversity and uh, that, that is collaborating with each other. Our, uh, I introduced uh, several uh, project results we have we have been doing in the three years. The first is the development project example open for patches. Uh, that are patch panel uh, open flow application that implemented the open flow controller. Uh, that are uh, is an uh, entity guys are developed and the <coughs> provided by the open source. So uh, user can control in the networking top network topology uh, from the our and developing GUI and uh, create, uh, creating network topologies, uh, for example, the host one and the host two are connected via the, these switches. So uh, this uh, network topology user can uh, con uh, design from the remote by the GUI, GUI and the open force control and open force switches uh, 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 inserting the flow, open flow to the, by using the open flow to the switches and the, net, the desirable networking topologies are created. And that, that uh, technology is already used in our testbed and the user, our user, testbed user can control in the, uh, their, uh, they're using their project by, by designing the network topology more uh, flexibility. That is the POC example we are doing the, in 2014 uh, in Interrupt Tokyo, uh, demonstrating Interrupt Tokyo, that is automated scale control. We have constructed the uh, March region um, environment of OpenStack and Tokyo and Okinawa and the US, and uh, we are uh, demonstrated our auto scale control uh, monitoring the networking, uh, network monitoring and the server uh, load and uh, uh, controlling the auto scale, 
automatically uh, according to the network, networking, fun, networking, uh, networking user using the bandwidth. Uh, this uh, is uh, our first POC uh, you doing in the open, open laboratories. This example is a joint project with Taiwan and uh, AAA is uh, uh, some uh, research institute. Uh, we are collaborating with AAA and uh, creating the service function chain in use cases. Uh, there we are building the merge region uh, in the Okinawa and the Taiwan, uh, creating the open stack environment. And uh, we are de de developing the merge region service function chaining controller. And the user can uh, create a change by the GUI and uh, automatically the VNF, but network functions that are uh, instances are loaded in the, uh, according to the configuration and creating the network function, service function chaining. And also, uh, same as uh, St. John, we, are, uh, we have just joined in the OPNB as our um, associate membership. And also, we have just created the environment of OPNB test lab, first test lab. Uh, and just, uh, just now that we are uh, creating the pot number one for using the fuel, uh, and uh, we are planning to create in the pot number two by the RDO. Oh, you have uh, one jump server, and uh, uh, pot number one is uh, five physical servers that are three controller and two compute nodes. And we are planning now to, to over this environment, uh, the port in our VNF test automation uh, system that we have uh, uh, done the last year, uh, or a more service function chaining um, POC or a joint POC with OBC members, such as St. Jun or some other, other members in the in, the, in Niger. So that uh, is our project formation that we are, have been um, do, doing. Uh, in our lab, there are several number, several number of uh, full-time engineers. That are, they have skills of open stack and uh, co uh, construct of stack, of stack environment, operator of stack environment, and also our networking skills that are such as our SDN and open flow. The center of the project uh, and the most important portion is the organizer. Uh, we think the organizer is a key of uh, this project. They are sitting between the uh, full-time engineers and the uh, corporate uh, company and the research institute of academia who joined the project. Uh, the organized task is very important and difficult, uh, I think. The uh, first is they create the plan of the project and setting the goal of a project. And second, uh, second recruiting the members, uh, companies interested in that project and create formation of the project. In part, the op Organizer have to communicate with a board member of our lab or uh, staffs, and also communicate with uh, stakeholders such as the government, etc. And after starting the project, the uh, organizer manages each member's activities and follow their uh, how they are processing toward the goals. And uh, in addition, um, promotion is an important task for organizer. There is the uh, we are going to the next project, our next action or project, and also seek the next collaboration project for not only the members, current members, uh, but also the recruiting the new members from the outside or from Asia or from global or, or from OpenStack ecosystem, etc. But in these three years of our lab history, that we have faced with many mismatches from member companies. And um, we are uh, some frequently said about our members that uh, could you buy our product or could you demonstrate and promote our product? Could you use our product in your POC or could you introduce potentially our customers? We think that the uh, background of this mismatch is, is uh, they think that it's consortium is uh, as a marketing perspective. We think that is very straightforward thinking of marketing people, and uh, we don't think that is uh, long. But uh, from our vision, uh, our consortium vision is open innovation. Open innovation. So uh, we request to this, uh, these members to align this marketing uh, purpose to the more open innovation activities. 
So that is very important for this type of consortium. The final slide, uh, we summarize the uh, session and uh, we had we, the, the lesson learned from our experience. The first is uh, find the open mind people inside companies. The human resource is important in this, this type of consortium. And to success the consortium, it's important to find uh, more, uh, find the people more uh, open. The, uh, in many, many cases, uh, uh, front side people is not so open. That we have to find uh, open mind people inside of companies. <laughs> Uh, for the for the purpose, we have just started a forum to recruit in the more open open mind open mind people inside the companies or members. And uh, uh, education is a big part of this type of consortium. The uh, open laboratories are the extension is also doing this education program. Uh, we think the current. Uh, IT and network system is becoming more and more uh, software defined and uh, possible to control and uh, manage by the code. So that is called the infrastructure as a code, we think. Uh, the, so we have, we, uh, the cons inform consortium, they educating the people more full stack is a more, very important thing. And I also introduced uh, the organizer is a key point of the, our uh, this type of consortium. Uh, uh, the culture of the project is uh, defined by the organizers, so that is very important to uh, uh, decide de de who is the organizer and uh, hire the organizers. And for our members, uh, the business is the final goal of uh, their uh, business. Uh, the, the, from the company members, and uh, so we have to keep the balance for each member's business. Uh, if we are, that we are focusing on several type of limited companies' uh, perspective, limited companies' business, uh, other members can maybe feel that uh, unfair for uh, the consortium, and that, that is. Uh, uh, if that if the uh, situation local uh, open innovation is not achieved. Finally, the consortium is uh, difficult to organize, and uh, but so keep the vision and the identity of the uh, is very important, and provide the value based on the vision and the active identity is a uh, very important thing, and to keep the uh, keep it, keep it is very uh, important to success in the consortium. So thank you for your time, and uh, that is the end of the session. If we have uh, questions or comments, that is uh, uh, five minutes. <laughs> do you mind? Uh, there's a few microphones, yeah. I think. That... Please, please speak at the microphone. Uh, sorry, there's one right on each aisle. Just the recording the session. Okay. Hello, Xavier Priam. I'm coming from the IRTBCOM. It's a kind of research center uh, with private members and with state members in France. Uh, we are working on the same areas as you. Um, I will discuss with you maybe for collaborations later on, but my question is, how do you manage between big members, small members, and IPR? So the big members, we have Orange, for example, in our a research center and we have SMEs and when we make a project of course yeah there's a difference of contribution and also of returns from projects and the the next question or the associated question is how do you manage IPR if you develop patents or whatever okay so maybe I can take uh, for Canada first okay so for uh, Sengen, uh what we do is we have that exact same situation where we have very large members uh, and a lot of them are even multinationals as well. Um, and then, of course, we have, uh, you know, uh, from a three-person SME all the way through to several hundred. Uh, so we have that exact situation. The, the default for us is that the uh, intellectual property uh, stays with the SME. T typically, it's their innovation that has got the member interested in doing this commercialization or this proof of concept. Uh, 
That being said, it is, uh, that is the starting position, and then anything can be negotiated after that. So, um, you know, if, uh, if something was created as a result of this very large company and this small company, uh, it would have been predetermined ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So you don't get into any legal issues. Um, the, the one thing that uh, I'm very concerned about is, uh, you know, large companies have a lot of lawyers and have a lot of deep pockets. And uh, I believe, it, you know, it's our role as a not-for-profit in Canada to protect the smaller companies. So even though there are members, we had some pre-established rules kind of right from the start uh, so we wouldn't run into that situation. Because, it, well, as you know, I mean, you know, any, any time any lawyers get involved in anything, it gets very complex and very expensive very quickly. And, and something that small companies just couldn't afford. Okay. And in Japan, I don't know. So, uh, there are very different, difficult points for uh, managing the organizations. Uh, we are caring about the small companies uh, more and more. But uh, uh, the baseline of our um, guideline, the criteria for the project or activities are based on the technologies are important. So, uh, you have to care the uh, small companies, and uh, but uh, uh, that is so. We, we, we think that technology is first. And uh, from the IPR, uh, the aspect of IPR, we are uh, creating the uh, technologies, but that, that we pro promise with each company that that is uh, license free for that the uh, output of our development or our research activities are going to open uh, with uh, some uh, maybe currently are about two licenses. Okay, so neither your organization or your organization is honing the IPR? None of them? Uh, so in the case of, uh, we actually, uh, Sengen ourselves, we chose um, one project last year, and we're probably going to take two or three this year. Um, so in the case, it will hold the same position uh, as uh, our large uh, multinational or our very large members, mm -hmm. and that is that the IP would stay with the uh, the SME, but then anything that we did jointly would be shared. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions, comments? All right. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And uh, um, you know, it's always tough being uh, before lunch and within a locked <laughs> auditorium. But I really appreciate you guys hanging around. All right, thank you. Thank you.